When spring arrives, it always seems to take us by surprise. Suddenly, several months of gray winter weather ends, and flowers are blooming all around us. Join us as we travel to the Savage Gulf to experience the end of winter and the beginning of spring. Cloudy evening, Andrew, Brian, and I were driving to meet up in Southwest Ohio before our next adventure began. After a few hours of driving, we arrived at our friend Dave's place. Well, you are in the right place. <laughs> yeah. Hey, good to meet you. Good to meet you, friend. Yeah, thanks for having Nice to meet you, Brian. And Dave had made some amazing freshly baked yeah, bread for us, <laughs> which we enjoyed with warm butter. After hanging out and enjoying the food, we headed out. All right, thanks, Dave. Now we were headed further south. We drove past city lights into Kentucky and arrived at a motel for the night. We got all of our gear sorted out ahead of time and then got ready for a good night's sleep. The next morning, we quickly freshened up, got the rest of our things packed up, and headed out. Now, we drove further south. We were excited for our trip, but some heavy rain made us a bit nervous. Weather eventually cleared as we drove past bucolic rolling hills and fields. We finally pulled into the trailhead and got to hiking. This is in part because it's not raining, but I'm feeling really good and excited about this. Because we're further south, all of the spring greens and wildflowers are coming up right now. And I've got this new pack. Brian's got a matching pack. It's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> We made our way towards the trailhead. Here, we saw a bumblebee pollinating some Virginia bluebells. From the trailhead, we'd be hiking to the Alum Gap Camp and checking out Greeter Falls. Then we'd hike to the Sawmill Camp, stay another night, then hike up to the Hobbs Cabin Camp. From there, we would hike all the way back out. But first, we had some other plants. So there's a bunch of native wildflowers growing in this area, but there is one that is ornamental, and I believe from Japan, and that's this, which is called the bleeding heart flower. There's a similar flower called squirrel corn that we might see growing out in the woods, but this one obviously has a really bright pink color. Before getting on the main trail, we made a quick detour to check out Laurel Falls, and we were getting a bit nervous about the weather. Now, we can't feel anything, but we heard something. <laughs> but <laughs> I have a feeling that's going to be how the day is going to go. It's going to be a lot of on and off rain, because that's how the drive was on the way here. It wasn't long before we made it to the Overlook, to the first of many waterfalls to come. It was an impressive sight, but before long, we were headed out. The trail led us to the top of the falls before winding back to where it started. So far, the weather was not quite what we had expected for the springtime. The rain is not too bad right now though, but I'm hoping it doesn't get worse because that combined with the cold would be really awful. <laughs> it is much colder than even I anticipated it to be. It's quite chilly right now. I think uh, once we get moving though, it'll change. Yeah. As we hiked, 
Andrew spotted an edible plant. Here's a berry we've seen before. It's called a partridge berry. These are actually edible. They grow on a vining plant along the ground and tastes like a really old apple that was in the same room as a cranberry. <laughs> so generally though, you don't want to eat bright red berries in the wild, right? Yeah, I mean, they, they can go either way really. Like color and berries, any rules of thumb that exists about them, they're really not that dependable, I feel like. As we made our way back to the trailhead, sleet started falling heavily. Well, this is less than ideal, but I guess I would take this over straight up rain. At least this gives it a chance to bounce off of us before it melts. Yeah, this is not what I was expecting when we were headed south in April. <laughs> this is cool though. <laughs> it was absolutely surreal to be hiking through falling sleet. All the while, new spring growth sprouted all around us. The trail led us to an overlook, where the surrealness of the weather really set in. White flecks of ice fell in front of a vista of bright green treetops that were just starting to pop with life. Amid the sleet, we saw fresh green leaves, fungi, and colorful wildflowers. One thing that I love about the spring, when it isn't snowing at least, is that along the trail, you see all these beautiful flowers. These ones that I'm seeing all over are called bluets. They're really such a simple and elegant looking flower, but they have a nice little bluish purple color, but it's one of my favorite signs of spring. When I first learned about it, I thought the name was Blue X, because like it has an X shape, but it's actually just bluets. We continued hiking and came across a naturalist sign about some of the wildflowers we might expect to find here. Apparently, because of the fact that it's this sunken in area, it creates a really unique ecological condition for like all these wildflowers to grow. It's over 80 species. I just learned. <laughs> <laughs> so that gulf down there is where we're gonna be for the rest of the trip. Today we're gonna be on the rim we're gonna camp at the edge and then we're gonna do a really long downhill tomorrow and then we'll just be in the gulf the rest of the time. Okay. Not far into the hike, there was a beautiful rocky overlook that we decided to check out. Man, I love spring. This is beautiful. The funny thing is, is this overlook is not nearly as far down as a lot of overlooks we've been on. So I was like looking down, I'm like, oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty crazy though. I love how the way the trees look right now, it's like a delicate painting. Like someone just took a brush and just dabbed a bit of bright green paint over this brown canvas. It's just so beautiful. <laughs> This time of year is really a magical one. You really get a sense that all of life is returning to the world. Any fears or doubts you had about life begin to fade away as the leaves bud and the flowers bloom. Nature often inspires these sorts of thoughts about the universe and it seemed fitting that we experienced one last burst of winter while surrounded by the wilderness. And sometimes, revelations about life can only come about from careful observation 
of the smallest details in nature. So on this outcropping, there's all these pine trees growing, and I noticed there's all these like galls growing on the branches. I'm not actually sure what causes it, probably some sort of fungus or insect. But if you look closely at the galls, they're actually like oozing with pine sap. It kind of makes me wonder if those would be good for like fire starting because it's so impregnated with that resin and that sap. On the last day, we'll be coming up from here. It's kind of like a really cool staircase. But the campsite is this way. You can actually get there either way, but we're going this way today. As soon as it stops raining, the enjoyment increases by tenfold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've heard that before. What is that? That is a pileated woodpecker. Okay. I remember we used to be really into looking for birds. Yeah. And a pileated woodpecker was one that you would see often. Yeah, they're so huge too. It's really cool whenever you actually do see it. We continued hiking along the top of the bluffs, passing through tall stands of pine trees. Every so often, we retreated to a view of the rocky cliffs below, or a view of the distant hills. Although everything here still looked and felt like winter, once in a while there were signs of spring to be found. So growing along some of these logs, there's a flower called halberd-leaved violet. At first glance, it doesn't really look like other wild violets I've seen, but the yellow flower has the same shape and the leaf is kind of more of a, a longer, more spear or lance looking shape, hence the name halberd leaved. And also on some of these logs, there's some uh, false turkey tail and violet tooth polypore growing. We also saw a turkey vulture perched on a tree in the distance. After a decent bit of hiking, we decided to sit on some stumps, rest, and have a snack. I've been trying to lift more weights. <laughs> so I just had all these protein bars. <laughs> I was like, I'll just bring these, can't you? <laughs> this. Oh. Jeez. Oh, wow. That's a lot. That's good. So you want any pure protein? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I offer anyone a cheese stick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, give it all to me. <laughs> Do you want one? Yeah, sure. Oh, man. This has been great so far. And the thing is, this is only going to get better. Each day, the weather's just gonna get better. <laughs> the campsites are gonna get better, too. Mm -hmm. By the end, we're just gonna be hotel archives and <laughs> in a cabin. Huh? <laughs> oh man, I can't wait. Now, we packed up our snacks and headed back out. We continued hiking along the ridge, and the view seems strange from this vantage point. It's so weird, something about how the trees look down there, like, I don't know, the fact that they're closer, it almost feels like I'm looking at a meadow with a bunch of shrubs or something but they're actually just trees really far down. It's so weird. As we hiked, I started looking around for some resources that we could utilize later at our campsite. So there's a bunch of sawdust from when they maintained this trail. Obviously some of it is soaked, but there's still some dry parts where the rain didn't really hit. So I'm gonna try to collect some of that and put it in this bag here. It's still a little damp, but hopefully if it dries out, It'll catch a spark like that. We'll see though. <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep it on the inside of my down jacket so it'll like warm up from the body heat. And hopefully some of that moisture will start to go away, but. It's in a Ziploc bag. Yeah, Where, I know, but. Where's the moisture gonna go? I keep it open, maybe it'll. But I mean, like. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it, but Robbie said it. So. <laughs> But that is something like you can do is when you have a tinder source, you can keep it in your pocket for so the warmth will dry it up. And even though it's in a pocket, some of it still does go away. Now, the trail led us to another clearing where we enjoyed another view of the hills. Oh wow, there's like a house in the distance there. You can kind of see it through the leaves. And then there's also like rocky cliffs peeking through all the trees over there. It's interesting because one of the hillsides is greener than the other, and I suspect that's because of the, the way the sun is facing. And on the ground, we saw some rattlesnake plantain 
and a cobweb with droplets from the melted sleet. Just off the trail, Andrew spotted a flowering tree. So this is a tree called redbud. It's a native tree that grows everywhere. It has like heart-shaped leaves. It's in the pea family. And in the springtime, these beautiful magenta flowers just like cover it. They'll come out of like everywhere on the tree. These are actually edible. And if I, if I pick the flowers, these flowers will eventually turn to pea pods. So it's just like picking berries off a plant. It doesn't actually hurt the tree or anything, but you can eat these. Mm. They have like a really crisp, kind of crunchy texture, and they actually taste like sweet peas. It's really good, actually. You want to try? Yeah. Mmm. It's almost like like a crisp lettuce with a hint of sweetness, like almost like a berry sweetness to it. Mm. Yeah, if you put those in a salad, that'd be good. <laughs> we kept hiking, and Brian reviewed our plans for tonight. So we've got about one mile left to the campsite, and the plan is, is after we get to the campsite and set up, we can go hike to Greeter Falls. But it's actually about four, and sunset is around seven. So if we're gonna have enough time to get to Greeter Falls and back to our camp before it gets dark, we're gonna have to hoof it a little bit. The hike to the campsite itself was relatively easy, but hiking to the falls added a decent chunk of mileage to today's hike. As we continued, we enjoyed many more views of the beautiful gulch beneath us. Occasionally, small bits of sleet continued to fall from the overcast skies above. After a while, we neared our destination. Actually, I think this might be it over here. Yeah, you can see a tent already. I saw a trail leading in there. Yeah, there's two yeah, tents up here. ahead. Oh, great. We finally reached the campsite area, passing by the latrine. So I stayed at this campsite right here, campsite one. It actually looked really nice because it's like nice and maintained, but it's still like in the middle of the woods and it feels rustic. Now we hike to our campsite. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a load off before we do anything else. Yeah. Oh yeah. Another protein bar. <laughs> Good start so far. Yeah. The fact that it's only going to get warmer and sunnier, it's very motivating. <laughs> Bodes well for yeah. our, our trip. And for our sleeping accommodations tonight, we had a Voltron situation. With our three parts combined, we put together a huge four-person tent. Wow! This is gonna be, oh man. This is so roomy. Exciting. Oh man. <laughs> so much room. This is so <laughs> oh man, this is so good. <laughs> there was a documentary called Water Walker with the canoeer, canoeist Bill Mason. He has this giant canvas tent and he's like, I know what people say. Where's the circus? <laughs> but I like a big tent. <laughs> he was right. He was right. The tents are where it's at. It seems like we're having a sleepover. I know, right? <laughs> it's like we came to Adventure Archives slumber party after dark. At the store, when I bought this, the dude recognized me. His name was Randall. And I was like, yeah, we're going to get this tent and then we're going to have a big dumb sleepover. <laughs> <laughs> We've been wanting to do this for a while too now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny because we. We're thinking doing it on a winter trip, and this happened to be an accidental winter trip. <laughs> this, is this is literally like the tents that you set up in the backyard for kids. Three idiots. It'd be, like, it'd be even funnier with Thomas in here. Just all four of us cramped in here like starting. It's too hard to blow while I can't do it. Just laugh.
half into your nozzle. <laughs> oh man, this is so great. I don't know if there's really any reason to have separate tents again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Why have we not been doing this before? <laughs> oh, this is awesome. <laughs> it really does feel way more roomy than any other tent we've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> You can't get me into one of those tents they call pup tents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, we could literally just do everything in this tent. And just cook right in the vestibule. <laughs> vestibule archives. <laughs> Before we got too comfortable, we headed out to check out the waterfall. Even though we are sort of racing against the clock, we were able to unload the tent and all our sleeping gear and all we're, we've got is water and food in our packs, so we're traveling light now, so I think we're going to make good time. So we want to go to Greeter Falls, where whichever one says that. Oh, there's our campsite again. <laughs> Greeter Falls, 1.4 miles. Yeah, last time I didn't check this out, but from everything I've seen and heard, this might be the best waterfall in the park. We hiked along a winding trail through the woods which eventually dropped down and led us to a suspension bridge. Yeah, so this is your first taste of uh, the bridges. Cool. Pretty bouncy. Oh, I thought you were on the bridge with me. It's so wobbly. I feel like if we all got on, it'd be like super wobbly. <laughs> it starts bouncing when you, when you want to put your foot down. So your foot touches the bridge sooner than you're ready for it, and then you just get all like off the balance. So this is Board Tree Falls, I believe. Wow! Past the falls, the trail took us through patches of eastern hemlock and impressive rocky cliffs that towered high above us. the rushing of the falls echoing off of the cliffs behind us. It definitely sounds huge. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of water. Here, the trail split to the upper and lower falls, and we decided to check out the lower. A rickety spiral staircase led us down a cliff. Soon, the falls were revealed to us. We scrambled down rocks to get closer, then enjoyed the view. If only it was warm enough to go in that water, because it looks pristine. I would be in there immediately. <laughs> I think what's equally impressive is this whole, like, yeah. chasm or whatever. You can see it's just been carved out. This is amazing. Yeah. The entire area felt almost like a quarry, except that it had been naturally carved out by Mother Nature herself.
We now made our way back up the cliff. Oh man, that was incredible. <laughs> it was certainly not what I expected in a good way. Oh, I All wish right. it was a warmer day. Yeah, me too. Unfortunately, the sun sets in half an hour, <laughs> so we gotta make it back now. It's time to go. Yeah. We retraced our steps, heading back to camp as evening began to fall upon us. We were tired and ready to get back, have some food, and just fall asleep in that tent. There she is. What a beaut. <laughs> oh, thank God. I volunteered last minute to gather some wood and have a fire to warm us up on this cold night. After collecting wood, I pulled out the sawdust to see if it was usable at all. <clears throat> but unfortunately, it proved to still be too damp. So this sawdust definitely did not have enough time to dry out. We weren't planning on having a fire tonight. And nobody wants to sit around watching me feather a stick, so we're just gonna go easy mode on this. Come on. There you go. What? Thankfully, the thin hemlock twigs we had gathered for kindling easily caught fire. God, now that we have a fire going, it was so worth it. <laughs> That's so true. You guys did good work. <laughs> now it was time to heat up some meals amid the fire's warmth. Brian had chicken fettuccine, Andrew had some chicken coconut curry, and I would be eating this entire lamb stew. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, it smells good. Okay, this oh smells my really God. good. Wow. Yo, I'm really hungry. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. Okay. Chicken now I'm, I'm a little food. more excited. <laughs> mm. Mm hmm. That hits the spot. All right, trade. Uh -huh. mm. You got it. Mm. That's, that's good, good too. too. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's good. So glad we can share food together. <laughs> Chicken coconut curry. Wow. This yeah, is so good. heavy, dude. Yeah. Okay, I'm just patting myself on the back. I did a really good job pouring that water. <laughs> 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 I estimated those proportions right. Holy cow. Mmm. That is incredible. Yeah. Wow, that's really good. I love how thick it is. Not a bad one in the lot. Oh, man, Ron Mueller, he never fails. <laughs> Ron Mueller never fails. Yeah, Ron Mueller knows how to eat good, man. <laughs> oh, no, no. This is what I've been waiting for ever since we left Big Bend. <laughs> <laughs> man, Brian, I'm so glad that you convinced us to do this fire. <laughs> Absolutely the right call. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> You know what the best part is? Hmm. <laughs> I do get in that tent after I'm in that It's gonna be the warmest cold night ever. <laughs> it was a little rough at the end today. Yeah. That last hike. Oh yeah. Now, this is more than making up for it. <clears throat> yeah, I need this. <laughs> and to top things off were some cup noodles. I wasn't sure if I'd need the Maruchan ramen. Oh, you better believe I do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, <laughs> noodles. <laughs> Man. Minus the smoke, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go wrong with, with a cup noodle. <laughs> oh, you missed the perfect rhyme. <laughs> you can't, oh, go, you wrong. can't go wrong with the Mary Chan. <laughs> <laughs> After dinner, we added some more wood to the fire and enjoyed its warmth. Spending time around a campfire was the perfect way to cap off the day before a cozy night of sleep. Oh yeah. Oh, I've been waiting for this all day. <laughs> it's gonna be 
good times tonight, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, tomorrow we have our longest day of mileage. Yeah. So we probably want to get to sleep ASAP. You know how our uncle would always say, like, imagine you're in a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> this is the re that yeah. realized. Yes. <laughs> this is some Huga cozy. <laughs> it's like a Pinterest board come to life or something. <laughs> we also added a rope to hang our damp clothes. <laughs> this way we have a divider between us. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is great. <laughs> I feel like my comfort level is at 9,000. Right <laughs> you know what this feels like? It's like we're on an expedition in the jungle or something. <laughs> We've got like a huge base camp. <laughs> Alright, now good night for real. <laughs> good night. <laughs> <laughs> the next morning, a gentle snow was pattering on our tent, but we were still warm inside. <laughs> Can you even see this face? It's just like a hat. Uh, I slept decently, but then like partway through the night I had to pee and I did not want to get up. <laughs> Because I heard the pitter-patter of the precipitation <laughs> on the tent. I rotisserie chickened a little bit because my joints were sore, but... Brian, you look hilarious with that hat. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep with my hat, and then I pull it over my eyes, like this. <laughs> <laughs> and it keeps my entire face warm. At the beginning of the night, my feet were cold, and my sides were a little cold. And then it's eventually I just like woke up and everything was just warm and comfortable and everything was felt felt normal. <laughs> That's good. We eventually got the day started and Andrew had a special treat prepared for us. I've got a surprise breakfast. It doesn't really involve cooking. <laughs> Milk and cereal. <laughs> So, not only is it cereal, it's these like weird snack size giant cereals. <laughs> oh man, these are huge. Look at these. Ding. <laughs> oh man. They're so big. <laughs> You've had plenty of good ideas, but this might be your best yet. <laughs> I can't believe. It's taken this long for us to do this. <laughs> oh man, I feel life returning to me. Do those taste like actual honeycomb? Like, is it oh, yeah. any. Mm -hmm. Getting on this action? Oh, heck yeah, man. <laughs> Fruit pebbles are pretty good, but I feel like the milk washes all the sugar off. <laughs> those honeycombs are on point, though. The honeycombs are incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Eating milk and cereal feels like something either a beginner or an expert backpack for one day. We might have to start doing this more often, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now that we had enjoyed our cold cereal, it was time to warm up with some hot coffee. <laughs> yeah, this steeped kind is really pretty good. Yeah, that highline is amazing. This is thanks to Joan, thank you Joan. Yeah, that's great. After coffee, we got ready to break camp. We packed up all of our things into our bags. Just as we took down the tent and finished up, sleet and snow started falling once again. Nonetheless, we hiked out, looking forward to the rest of the day. The snow fell softly from above as we passed by a couple of junctions leading to the next portion of our journey. So we'll go this way a little bit and then take another junction. So that was to the falls yesterday, now we're going this way. Now, the trail led downhill taking us along a rushing river that cascaded over shelves of shale rock. As we hiked, the snow gradually stopped and the sun finally started to shine. So the day started out feeling like winter, but there's still some reminders that it's actually spring. Just off the trail, there's like a beautiful flowering dogwood and also more of those really bright magenta colored red bud flowers. I'm hoping as we get lower in elevation, we're gonna start seeing even more of that sort of thing. Indeed, 
As we hiked further down, we saw more signs of spring. Some leaves over here that even I recognize. So those are tulip poplar leaves. I think a lot of the green trees we're seeing, like in the distance, are these trees. They make great tinder, so if we see more of those, I'll try to collect some for the fire later. We also saw longspurred violets growing nearby. And all at once, Andrew started spotting other wildflowers growing left and right. This is the first trillium I've seen on the actual trail. And this is Trillium Cecile. It's got these distinct like maroon colored petals and these kind of blotchy leaves. And then over here, we've got some wild blue phlox growing. And these just add like such a nice pop of color all along the trail. And Brian started seeing familiar plants as well. Uh, right here we've got these curled up caterpillar looking plants and these are actually young immature fronds that are going to unravel and eventually become these ferns. I think these are Christmas ferns. So as, I, as we keep lowering I'm seeing even more and more flowers. So I've seen some wild geraniums, partly foam flower. I also saw a rue anemone and then a very similar looking white flower that's in the hepatica genus. They're all very beautiful. So down here there's also a brilliant yellow flower called Pacera obovata, but if you look at some of the basil leaves and flip them over, they're actually this nice dark maroon purplish color on the bottom. It felt as though we had been transported through time on this trail. All of the snow and sleet that fell onto the ground seemed to have magically germinated into beautiful spring ephemerals. As we lowered in elevation, we saw even more flora growing from the forest floor. Okay, I'm having like way too much fun right now because there's so many wildflowers coming out. Earlier I saw some Canadian wood betony. Now I'm starting to see some Trillium grandifolium, which are the ones with the white flowers. Some of them are a little more pinkish. And we're also getting a better view at some of the flowers we've already seen, like uh, wild geraniums. Uh, this is the Hartley foam flower, and you can kind of see why it's called that. It's like this, I don't know, does that look foamy to you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vaguely. <laughs> I also saw some false Solomon seal plants that are just starting to emerge. It's crazy how much things just switch because like when we were up at the campsite there was only a few violets and nothing else but this is like paradise. <laughs> and growing nearby was woodland stone crop, a succulent native to the eastern U.S. Below us, Rapids rushed along the stream, providing water to the May apples and striped wintergreens. And I spotted another beautiful wildflower. Holy crap, uh, Brian was asking about some trilliums and then he pointed these out. And I, I was seeing these leaves all along and I was like, they kind of remind me of like iris leaves. And it turns out these are irises just growing in the wild. Oh my God, that is beautiful. <laughs> Wow, this is like, <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in heaven right now. I feel like Arnold when he gets the pump. <laughs> these irises were dwarf crested irises, and they were growing pretty close to these Robin's plantain flowers. So these are the same red bud flowers we saw the other day. And just to reiterate, picking a flower from this tree is not gonna hurt it. How is it? I mean, it's refreshing. It's kind of like crunchy, like lettuce at first, and then there's a little bit of tanginess at the end, I feel. Yeah, like. yeah. Another tree that I love in the spring, this is a buckeye. And these leaves are not only out because this is one of the first trees that leaves in the springtime. There's some more up in the distance over there. What are those droopy ones over there? Those are uh, perfoliate bellworts. They kind of look similar to uh, Solomon seal. We hiked through more garden-esque paths, seeing a variety of colorful wildflowers. Among the wildflowers that we saw were these red flowers called fire pinks. We continued on and the sun began shining more and more as the clouds dissipated away. Now, it felt like we had truly entered the spring season.
you saw still more colorful flowers and plants, including these dwarf larkspurs, galliums, and Virginia knotweed. A far cry from yesterday, we were now surrounded by lush greenery popping with a variety of different colors. It really was surreal how much the moisture of the valley had made this environment so much more lush than the woods we saw high up on the rocky bluffs the previous day. So just on this rock alone, there's so many different plants growing. One of the first things I noticed coming out of the moss is something called stone crop, which is one of the few succulent plants that grows around here. There's also ruin anemone, wild violets, wild phlox, wild geranium, and some trilliums growing. So as I was looking at all these flowers, I noticed the distinct bark of some tulip poplar sticks. I've talked about it before, but it has kind of a darker color and usually have these cracks in it. But the giveaway is that some of it has peeled off in a very fibrous manner. So I'm gonna collect some of this as best as I can. It's a little brittle, but some of it should just peel off pretty nice like that. The trail continued along the river. Eventually, it led us to a lower, flat area where we could hear the sound of a nearby waterfall. Yeah, if I remember correctly, we can go out into the middle of the water, get a closer look. Oh, I just found the tinder mother load. <laughs> Holy crap. I'm actually not sure what bark this is, but this is gonna be amazing. Why is it chewed up like that? I have no idea. It's kind of hard to tear, but I'll, I'll take care of that in a second. <laughs> Oh, there's some birch bark too. All right, yeah, we're definitely gonna get a good fire going tonight. Before collecting all the tinder, we decided to check out the falls. Actually, I feel like last time I was here, there was a lot more water. Yeah, it looks like we're kind of in the riverbed here. Yeah, the water level is definitely lower. Yeah. This is. One of those trips where I feel like I can stay out here forever. <laughs> Although these were smaller falls, we were enchanted by the way the water flowed over the different layers of rock, as though it had been painted or sculpted by someone. After taking in the calm, flowing water, we returned to the trail and talked about our surroundings. So I'm pretty sure you can see the green bottom there. I'm pretty sure the water was up to the top of that last time I was here because I don't think you could get all the way to the waterfall. It was raining yesterday. You'd think that the water level would be higher. Last year when I came here was the exact same week that we're here now. And the weather is quite different. So. So earlier we saw Trillium Cecile, and these ones also have maroon petals, but these are called Trillium Recurvatum. And you can tell because the petals, they curve kind of backwards on the flower. And then over here, there's a plant called Wild Ginger. And actually, this one has a little flower starting to come out. Wild Ginger, as the name implies, if you pick up the root and eat it, it has this kind of gingery taste. I've tried it, and it actually, it kind of numbs your mouth the way a Sichuan peppercorn does. So it's it's not just that ginger flavor, but it actually kind of tingles your, your tongue. I've heard in high amounts it's a little toxic, but for a little bit, it's totally fine to eat. So like I said, I'm not even sure what kind of bark this is, but you don't really need to know that to know this will catch a flame <laughs> or catch a spark really easily. So I'm just gonna cut some of these pieces off. That's gonna be great for starting a fire. But just in case, I wanna collect some of this birch bark too. Gonna cut a section out of here. After collecting the tinder, 
We continued along the trail, hiking up a hill that led out of the gully. As we ascended the hill, we started seeing more and more rocks scattered around the forest, and we eventually came across a giant boulder. You kind of wonder, where exactly did this rock come from? Like, it probably just tumbled down from somewhere, but it's so massive. I'm not going to try too hard. <laughs> I don't have a big mat underneath. <laughs> we continued hiking atop the hill, surrounded by open, expansive forests. More giant boulders surrounded us on either side of the trail as it started winding back downhill. As we approached the bottom of the hill, we came across a junction with a path leading to another waterfall called Ranger Falls. But first, we decided to take a break and have a special snack that I had brought. Some bagels and cream cheese. A simple treat, but one that's all the more appreciated when backpacking. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Man, that has a spot. Yeah. <clears throat> Cream cheese bagel has such a like specific association, I feel like. Yeah, there's really nothing else like it, is there? Mm. Yeah. We took some time to rest at the junction, but we still had over five miles to go, so we soon got up to keep hiking. <laughs> Unlike the last time I was here, the creek bed was completely dry and we easily made our way across. As we hiked towards the waterfall, we noticed subtle changes in the environment that reminded us spring had truly arrived. I think you'll notice this really quickly, but this area was way more lush than the rest of the trail last time I was here. Because huh. I think the water just kind of like sprays out here, but like already you can see. Yeah, there's like all this moss growing everywhere too. Look how Princess Mononoke this is right here. Look how Princess Mononoke I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> the warm sun started shining through the clouds again, accentuating the beauty of the lush environment around us. See, like, look up here, just how much greenery there is. Pretty sure it's because of the mist spray from the waterfalls. It's gotta be. Like, even... The cliff sides are just covered in vegetation. Yeah, and actually I just spotted another wildflower that I didn't even see in that big flowery valley called cutleaf toothwort. And it's in the mustard family, edible, and it uh, kind of tastes like wasabi when you eat it. The forest floor here was carpeted in all sorts of greenery, including this young water leaf plant. Yeah, it's crazy. I think this valley is even more biodiverse than the other because I'm also seeing blue cohosh, and I just saw some Dutchman's Bridges, which is one of my favorite spring wildflowers. <laughs> you can clearly hear the waterfall. You can start to see it, but it looks pretty substantial. It looks like a wall of water. <laughs> and now we approached Ranger Falls. We neared the falls, and when we were close, we took in all of its glory. The falls were incredible. Like a tapestry draped over the rocks, the water gracefully slid over the bluffs in front of us, filling the air with cool mist. It's quite impressive right now, but this is actually pretty light compared to last time. Wow. It was just a wall of water really violently spraying you. Wow. I see why you mentioned all the moisture because you can really feel like the mist everywhere. Now we headed back to the path to the main trail. Along the way, I saw a flowering stone crop and some other things. So I was hiking and I saw a terrible looking sight <laughs> growing on either side of this log. It's a mushroom called Devil's Urn. You can see why it's called that. It's got these urn-shaped cups. That is really cool. Hopefully that is the first of many mushrooms we'll find. 
believe it or not, this mushroom is said to be edible, though not very tasty. We returned to the junction and continued along the main path. As we hiked, we saw more large boulders in the dry creek bed to our right, as well as on the hillsides to our left. The trail again ascended uphill, and we were really starting to feel in our legs. You guys struggling as bad as I am? Kinda. <laughs> I'm not doing too bad yet. I think once we reach that junction, we can take a break, eat a snack, and boost our morale. <laughs> we continued on, and I noticed some water in the otherwise dry creek bed below. So, last time I was here, I took a break here and I filled up water down there. It is definitely quite a bit drier, but we could fill up, depending on how you guys are doing water-wise. I mean, I'm fine with taking a break, and I think we should just fill up water. We shouldn't, we shouldn't push our luck. We enjoyed the peaceful sounds and sights around us as Robbie left to fill up the water in the creek below. Thankfully, it was an easy one-man job. It is like a hundred times easier now that we figured out the plug method. <laughs> I'll just sit in there very relaxedly. I was sitting up here thinking like, you know, it's probably a lot easier with the new method, but I still forgot that you still have to fill up every <laughs> lot of whistles and you have to pump that. It was, it was much easier. With our water replenished, we were off again. The trail climbed uphill again over some uneven rocks before revealing another trail junction. According to this, we've got 3.3 miles to the campsite. Not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. Two days from now, we'll be going back up here. Yeah, but yeah today we're going to Sawmill. Here, we decided to stop and rest a bit more, enjoying the sounds of woodpeckers and the sights of wildflowers. And then, we continued on. It was a fairly peaceful hike from here along the hill. As we hiked, there were more spring plants that caught my attention. Finally found what I thought I was gonna be seeing a lot more of around here, uh, but they're called ramps or wild leeks. They're in the Allium family. And it's one of the most sought after forageable plants. Right here, you can see the stem and the little clump of seeds from last year. And that's one thing about how people harvest these is a lot of people wanna pull the entire bulb up because they wanna use it like a garlic bulb or a shallot or something but it's much better if you just pick a few leaves from each plant and let the plant stay there to grow because when you pick the whole bulb, obviously it dies, so. We continued hiking and found ourselves at another suspension bridge. And this one was higher and more wobbly than the last one. It's scary, right? People were giving me a hard time because I was scared of the bridge and I was like, dude, it's scary. It's not like I'm not going to do it, but... From the vantage point of the bridge, we retreated to a nice view of the rocky gulch below us. But walking on such a shaky bridge was definitely a weird sensation. Yeah, it's like when you're in the middle of that bridge, you're looking at how thin the rails on the side are, you're just kind of like, oh. <laughs> like I started imagining crossing that if there were no railings at all. Oh, man. Like, oh. <laughs> We saw even more wildflowers as we hiked, including this Carolina vetch and some tasty flowering wood sorrels. The trail wound higher on the hillside, and we came across another plant that seemed out of place. This is really interesting. There's some sort of bamboo growing here. I'm guessing it's not a native species, but I've seen some people who plant bamboo in their yards and it just like spreads so fast. So I'm surprised there's not more of this around. But... We kept on hiking despite our fatigue. Once in a while, we stopped and took a break to eat some snacks before continuing on. The trail descended in elevation, and the forests here were a bit more brown and barren, save for a few spring greens popping from the cracks in the rocks. The 
Before long, the trail was back in a valley with another suspension bridge for us to cross. Definitely a weird and uncomfortable sensation when you walk on that bridge. On the other side of the bridge, we saw some trout lilies growing from the dried creek bed. These beautiful flowers also happen to be edible and have a mottled pattern on their leaf that resembles the skin of a trout. The trail again ascended uphill onto another ridge, but thankfully the trail quickly flattened out. Oh. Now this I like. Here, Andrew saw another familiar tree. This is a tree we've seen many times before, one of my favorites, a beech tree. But right now it is at the perfect time to eat the leaves. These are nice and kind of translucent almost and really bright green, so the leaves are perfectly tender to just eat straight up. But sometimes I really like to forage for flowers and leaves and make a wild salad, and this is a perfect replacement for like lettuce for the base of the salad. I am actually gonna eat these beech leaves because this is on a tree that's already been fallen and there's just kind of a last burst of life. I'm gonna pick these. And it's kind of a general leafy taste, but there is like a surprising substantiveness to it. Like it's between the texture and the flavor almost being kind of starchy, it's not bad. You guys wanna try it? It is devoid of taste so far. <laughs> is it wet or dry nothingness? No, there's, there's, I'm hardly getting any taste. There's kind of a powdery texture to it, but not really an actual taste. Yeah, I can't really, dry nothingness. I think that's kind of what I mean though. Like to me, it, it has the same flavor as like flour. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. Like it's just like a, but for some reason that feels kind of substantive to me. It's like you're eating some sort of starch, even though it's a leaf. But it, it is a really good base for like a salad because anything tastes good if you put dressing on it. <laughs> <laughs> Up ahead was a historic site just off the trail that we were considering checking out. Looks like we got 0.6 miles left and that is the Gator Savage historic cabin. I feel like we are all thinking the same thing, <laughs> which is let's keep going. <laughs> Don't believe you can go inside. Well, we're going to be going inside a cabin tomorrow. <laughs> I'm okay with skipping it. I've yeah. seen it before. Let's skip That's it. very downhill. <laughs> yeah. Onward. <laughs> if you would like to see that, just go to the previous video. Oh, you guys have not seen the Transformers movie, right? There's something called the AllSpark. Oh. And you're only supposed to open it in your darkest hour. Mm -hmm. This is our darkest hour. <laughs> Mine, anyway. So it's brownie time. Gotta <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, savor each nibble. <laughs> Tomorrow it's gonna be all about just pacing ourselves. <laughs> Since we don't have much mileage, we just take a break when we want to take a break. Give our sweet time. And <clears throat> definitely sleeping in tonight. Yeah. Mm. After resting, we continued on seen some bear corn and a millipede along the way. In the distance, we could see hills through the trees, and we spotted some other landmarks. It's like a big pool of water right down there. At least we got a source if we need it. Yeah. We're very close. I think the bridge and the intersection is just up ahead. In fact, you can hear people at the campsite over here. We were definitely close now, so we hurriedly continued hiking. Here, the trail brought us to one more suspension bridge just before our campsite. No matter how many of these we crossed, it was still a weird sensation. Sometimes you kind of gotta like stop because it's getting too wobbly. We reached the junction with a trail we would be hiking up tomorrow. But right now, we were just at the campsite and we were excited to settle down for the day and get some food and rest. This last jaunt to the campsite is very pleasant at least. Yeah. We passed by the outhouse and found our site, which had a huge fire pit. Whoa. 
Wow, our tent's going to go perfectly right there. <laughs> Before doing anything, we sat down to get some rest. The sun slowly set in the evening as we set up our giant tent for the night. After setting up the tent, it was time to boil some water for tonight's dinner. While that was boiling, we got our gear inside the tents and collected firewood. So I'm making two piles of wood, one for tonight and one for tomorrow morning for more of an elaborate breakfast. After collecting some kindling, the water was just about boiling. We poured the water into our meals. Andrew would be having fettuccine alfredo, I would be having homestyle chicken and rice, and Robbie would be having butternut squash dal curry. <laughs> I'm so excited for oh. this. I've been waiting for this since last night. <laughs> I've been waiting for this since you ate it in Texas. <laughs> oh my god, this smells oh, right, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. It smells like fall. Mm. Oh. Mm. Wow. Mmm. This is good. It's super hearty. Mm. Food really hits different when you actually need it. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. That is amazing how unentertaining food it is when you're not hungry. Yeah. <clears throat> you don't want to trade bites. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow, that's good. That's really good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, that fettuccine alfredo, <clears throat> that you can't miss with that right yeah. there. Yeah. Butternut doll might be a, another staple. Yeah, we've all got very hearty meals tonight. Mm hmm. It was well deserved too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a long hike. These campsites are excellent. <clears throat> Just nice, great wide open space. I'm saying with how big the fire pit is and how big our tent is, it feels like we shrunk. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like we slept a good amount last night, but yeah. I'm gonna sleep in like nobody's business tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, we've got a relatively short day so we can take our time in the morning. I'm actually doing a two for tonight. <laughs> I also have this soup, which you guys are welcome to try. Mm. I gotta add these tortilla chips and cheese to it. Oh yeah. Cholula sauce. And then finally, lime powder. This is really quite good. Mmm. That's really good. Mmm. The flavor that you get from that is just so different from what you would normally expect on a camping trip. More acidic, sour taste. Mm -hmm. We finished eating just as dusk fell and a half moon shone in the dark sky above. With the temperatures dropping, Andrew started preparing our campfire. So this is the amazing stringy fiber that we found earlier. This stuff is so fluffed up. I'm going to try and just use a little bit so we can save some for tomorrow morning and maybe even tomorrow evening. as easy as pie. Now hopefully all this stuff is dry enough to catch some of it, but that's another question. Some of it is catching at least. Uh, yeah, there we go. I think even some of the logs underneath are already catching. The feeling I get from a good fire, that's why I get so excited when I find good tinder. <laughs> I'll leave that for now and then we can keep feeding it. With the fire roaring, it was time to enjoy its warmth for the rest of the night. Around the warmth of a fire, you quickly forget about any hardships you've faced. We had hiked through the cold sleet, trudged miles up and down hills, and we had arrived at our campsite with weary feet. But amid the fire's glow, all of those memories slipped away. Instead, what remains are the memories of all the good moments in life, and a cherishing of the joy of the present moment. At the end of winter, spring reminds us that there is so much in life to live for and to cherish. It reminds us that, despite all its flaws, the world is not a cynical, hopeless place, but a place where beautiful things happen constantly 
even in the face of struggle. You know, this is actually a pretty good send off to winter, all things considered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got all the winter, tomorrow's gonna be nice and warm. It's like, no looking back after that. <laughs> it was funny how today it felt like we were walking through a portal of the seasons. Like, it started in the yeah. morning mm -hmm. with all the snow and all those flowers later. Yeah. One thing I love about spring is that it's one of those transition seasons, so it always feels like another really good opportunity for change and for like possibilities in the future. Bear Grylls always said that fire was nature's TV. Mm. And when we first started backpacking, that was super true. And it's still true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm remembering that anew, that it is a great TV. Well, it's funny because when we were filming that hotel archives, I remember sitting in the hotel and just being so bored at one point. <laughs> and it's like right here we're doing Nothing really that different. We're just sitting around watching That's those. Sure, yeah. But it's like, this is so much more fulfilling and entertaining. Yeah, the fire really just brings the night to a close. It's like the conclusion of a good day. We enjoyed the fire a while longer, but it was soon time to go to sleep in our ridiculously large tent. <laughs> Sharing a tent is like, usually, you know, when the day's done, we each go to our own shelters and it's like, okay, time to sleep. But with a tent, it's like, ah, the fun can continue. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's so true. <laughs> Inside the tent, we got all of our sleeping accommodations ready and changed into our nighttime clothes. It was definitely a cozy situation. We're all literally peas in a pod. <laughs> it's like a bear comes in. It's like one of those fruit pies from the grocery store. Oh, oh, oh. Only it's filled with humans. <laughs> we got a sock graveyard up there. <laughs> and all this Oops. real estate we have above our heads. <laughs> we should be hanging more things up there. <laughs> yeah, we need to find some way to put the fourth person up top. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up early in the morning, just after dawn. The morning air was chilly, so I decided to warm up by collecting some extra firewood. Eventually, we all started to wake up as the sun peaked above the hills, and Andrew had an elaborate meal planned for the morning. Okay, so for breakfast today, we're having some miso soup with dashi seasoning. And to go with that, we're gonna have some rice, some canned eel, mm. and some furikake seasoning. Also, we have a ton of wood, so we're gonna get a fire started, so. Heck yeah. <laughs> Before cooking, I had to prep the fire. The plentiful wood from last night and the tinder we had collected would make starting the fire an easy job. Before long, we had flames, and our kindling slowly started to catch fire. With the fire started, it was time to prepare the rest of breakfast. First off was some instant rice boiled in a pot on the fire. Next, we boiled some more water for a different dish. While it boiled, Andrew checked on the rice. Now, it was time to prepare the miso soup, 
which was an easy enough task with instant miso packets. But we also had a secret ingredient, dashi soup stock. That is real good. Mm. Yep, that's on point. Okay, so what do we got here? We've got three different kinds of furikake. Can you tell me what they are? The types of furikake were rocky seashore seaweed, original bonito, and perilla leaves with sardines, which we added to the rice. Yeah, one is probably enough. <laughs> To go with the rice, we had some delicious Chinese-style canned fish. With our breakfast spread complete, it was time to dig in. All right, thank you, Andrew, for a great breakfast idea. Oh. <laughs> Enjoy. Oh, man, that is so good, wow. Whenever I've made miso at home, I've always wondered why it's not like the restaurant and it's that dashi powder. Mm. It's the missing key. The good thing about miso, especially for breakfast, is that, you know, first of all, it's gonna warm you up, but <laughs> it's such a light, like, soup. You never feel, it doesn't feel heavy and you don't feel weighed down after it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, it's like you get a bunch of flavor, but you don't feel weighed down. Yeah, it's nice, a nice translucent broth. <laughs> all right, let's try that rice. <clears throat> yeah. I'll let you just, Mm. Let me try this first. I don't know if you'll like the eel, but it's very flavorful for breakfast, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it goes well with the rice. That's good. Mm. You know, this community bowl. <laughs> yeah. How is it in the soup? Mm, good. I need more, actually. <laughs> you need to add the fish to this. Yeah. So we can just... Okay. This is another example, though, of like eating better while camping than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Something about being out here inspires putting effort into your meals and stuff. Wow, that was good, man. This might be <clears throat> one of the top meals I've had camping. Funny how eating out of a perfect. We took our time eating breakfast. We had plenty of time to waste today as we only had a few miles to hike. As the morning carried on, we mingled around doing various chores and observed the nature around us, including this green tiger beetle. After getting a few things tidied up, we relaxed beneath the warm sun. All around us were the sounds of songbirds and the sight of beautiful flowers and budding greenery. It was a restful morning, but eventually it was time to start moving again. After that wonderful nap, it's time to give myself some wake-up juice. You look like Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> Your friends won't save you now! <laughs> Man, this smells good. Mmm, tastes good too. That'll warm you up! <laughs> oh yeah. Ooh, that's good. After coffee, we broke camp and headed out. On the way, we inspected some other campsites. Then, Brian and I went to search for water while Andrew watched our packs. Our water supply was low.
There was supposed to be a spring nearby, but all of the creek beds we had seen so far had been pretty dry. Yeah, let's hope this spring actually exists because right now it looks dry as a bone. I hear a trickle. Nope, that's a woodpecker. Could not be drier. <laughs> let's go up ahead a little bit, maybe somewhere trickling. Negative. Oh, and just pray that there's water on the trail. Alrighty. Back at the campgrounds, spring was in full swing. But with hardly any water, we were a bit concerned about the day's hike. I guess we'll just have to hang in there until we <laughs> find something. <laughs> we didn't see any water around us, but Andrew did find some interesting plants. It's funny because I keep seeing plants that I expected to see like all of yesterday, but this is like the first patch that I'm seeing. But there's some blood roots growing down here. And bloodroot is like a medicinal plant and it gets its name because if you dig it up and cut open the root, it actually bleeds like a really deep red color. And I've heard it's good for like certain skin ailments and it can be used for other medicinal purposes. And also growing along this tree, there's some leaves belonging to a flower that we saw the other day called hepatica. This is a really good view of like the really unique shape of the three lobed leaf of that flower. But yeah, as per usual, this whole place is just popping with life. We once again came across a bone dry creek bed and some more plants. So this is a good example of something you would love to find if you went foraging. There's just this huge patch of wild leeks or ramps and these ones are pretty big and you can actually really smell the, the garlic smell just emanating from these. And a bunch of these plants have a lot of leaves coming out of them so you can even harvest like a couple leaves and still keep the plant safe. I've heard some people don't like the big leaves because they're too strong in flavor but I feel like that's exactly what I want from wild leeks. It's great to use in like soups or you know if you're making like a scallion pancake or something like that. Stuff like this makes me want to just get on all fours and graze on the forest floor. So down on the ground there are some water leaf plants and they have this really cool ink blot kind of Rorschach looking pattern but that is also an edible plant at least when it's young and tender. Later on it grows bigger and the pattern goes away and flowers come out, but during this time of year, you can just pick the leaves and eat them raw. There's another outhouse to the left there. I mean, that looks dilapidated, so maybe it was an old outhouse. We wondered if the campsite we stayed at last night used to extend further out. After looking around, we hiked up a steep hill and arrived at a junction. 3.2 miles to Hobbs Cabin. Let's see what this sign says up here. This used to be a road and they used it to move stuff all over Tennessee, apparently. Drovers moved their herds up and down the Cumberland Plateau. This traffic shared the road with other travelers. As a result, herders and wagons had to compete for space. So the Stage Road Historic Trail, it's kind of like a connector from the west side to the east side of the Big Loop. The nice weather is really great, but the ironic downside is we're low in water and we're gonna need it more today. <laughs> yeah. We had only hiked half a mile so far. As we hiked, we saw more and more dried up streams. Still no signs of water, but we're making pretty good progress. We kept our eyes open for water, but seemed to only find a few trickles here and there. Every now and then I'll hear the leaves rustling, and it'll sound kind of like trickling water and I'll get excited for a second. Nope, just some super dry leaves. But soon, I heard something else. Unless that's the wind, and I really don't think it is, there's running water up ahead, I can hear it. Oh, 100%. That is 100% running water. <laughs> oh, baby! That is beautiful! Oh, what a sight. What a sight. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop, whoop, whoop. We heard Robbie whooping in the distance. And at first we thought he was just waiting for us, but he can hear water clear as day now, so he's clearly found the water. Wow. That's loud. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that is a beautiful. 
beautiful, beautiful sight. Oh, it's so weird. This one is flowing a lot. All the others are so dry. Couldn't have asked for a better spring. This is yeah. perfect. Now, we started pumping the water as we enjoyed this little oasis. It was great to be able to guzzle down water with reckless abandon. When we were looking for this water, it was literally the only thing I could think about. I was just like, until we have water, there's no rest or relaxation. We just got to keep slowly and steadily moving forward. Before we found the water, I was like, oh God, I'm just going to trudge as long as I can. But now I feel like I can take on the whole day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the great thing about that stream is it wasn't a trickle. <laughs> yeah. Ahead on the trail was a huge fallen beech tree. As I climbed over it, I spotted something interesting. Oh, wow. Put your hand right at the edge of this hole. Brian, come feel this. Uh, yeah, it feels like an air vent, but... Okay, if I can... That doesn't seem like a smart thing to do. Hold on. Almost. What are you doing? You'll see. <laughs> Very poor judgment right now. Oh, ooh, that's gross. That feels kind of nasty. Oh. Uh, this is... Oh. An edible mushroom. It's in the Heraceum genus. I was looking in this hole out of curiosity and I just saw this huge one growing in there. But any everything in that genus is edible anyway, so let me see if I can get some more. <laughs> I'm just giving birth to mushrooms. <laughs> grab another chunk there. You should feel it. It uh it feels way grosser than it looks. <laughs> oh man, that's an awesome find though. It smells like a mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> this lion's mane mushroom might look weird but it's completely edible and even has medicinal properties. Now we kept hiking. The train started to get rockier along the hilltops, but as we trudged back down, we saw more wildflowers. Soon we approached another large creek bed that we would have to cross. But just as we were about to cross the suspension bridge, we heard a sudden roaring noise in the sky. Yo, I think that was a supersonic jet. Wow, that was crazy. It, it was like, had like a red tip. It, yeah, it looked like a rocket. Now, it was time to cross. Oh, a little wobbly. This bridge felt even wobblier than the others, especially with the winds blowing. But after crossing, we had less than two miles left to hike. We're going to be going pretty heavily uphill, and then we'll hit a bit of a break while we'll be walking along a ridge line, and then the last stretch of uphill right before the cabin. As we hiked uphill, we noticed another running stream far below us. Imagine if we didn't come across that stream earlier and we had to go all the way down there to get the water. And we would have been tired and already out of water. Things to be thankful for. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you start wasting your water, just washing <laughs> your socks. <laughs> Now, the uphill trudge continued. As we hiked higher, we saw some more interesting plants. Every so often we see these patches of really leafy plants growing around, and something called American Columbo. At first I thought it was Virginia Bluebell, but the leaves look slightly different, and I would have expected to see some flowers by now, but it's really interesting just seeing how they grow. It's almost like someone planted lettuce on this hillside or something. Later in the season, this plant will grow a stalk with speckled purple-green flowers. We've said it a million times, but I can't get over just how much harder uphill is than flat ground. So the first step you take uphill is so difficult. With all the uphill, frequent breaks were definitely a worthwhile indulgence.
So they have one mile left. Yeah, unfortunately though, this is gonna be the hardest part. A lot of switchbacks, straight up hill, and a ton of rocks. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> but we were at least making decent distance. We got even higher in altitude. We noticed more and more rocks jutting out from the dirt. Well, one piece of good news is we can see the top now. Yeah. Could still take a very long time to get up, but that's encouraging. Along the trail, we also saw a tree with a Ganoderma fungus growing out of it, as well as more leafy plants. Now these are leaves that look like that American Columbo we saw earlier, but I think these ones are actually uh, Virginia bluebells. Right now there's no flowers coming up though, so that would be the surefire way to know. Kind of got fuzzier leaves compared to the other one, too. Okay, I got good news. That right there was the last switchback. From here, it's a straight shot of a ton of rocks. Oh, they saved the best for last. As we climbed higher, our feet grew more and more weary. Eventually, the steep uphill leveled out, but we were now met with rough, rocky terrain. To make matters worse, the rocks were often wobbly and unstable, and traveling even a short distance took a significant amount of time. We stopped and rested along the way to enjoy the distant views and rest our weary legs. If Thomas were here, he would 100% already be at the cabin, just relaxing. <laughs> he would have left us like back at the bridge down there. <laughs> okay, you guys ready? Ready to do this? No. <laughs> yeah, I am. Let's do it. Ready as I'll ever be. We kept on through this treacherous terrain, but the more we hiked, the further away our destination seemed. It feels like a Mario level where you step on certain blocks and they fall from under your feet. <laughs> Hey, just everybody, be careful. Don't get injured now. <laughs> and, in addition to the wobbly rocks, the trail now decided to take us on a steep uphill once again. Well, it, it definitely goes up now. Unless we final. get to the top, that's the cabin-ish yeah. area. I went down this trail, so the opposite direction when I did it. And I remember it being hard, but not like this. And people, they even warned us yesterday that this rock section is utterly interminable. And they didn't even undersell it, they just, it's just this bad. It's supposed to be 1.9 miles from that suspension bridge. It feels like I've been hiking all my life on these <laughs> rocks. <laughs> this has got to be the last section. It's got to be it. Eventually, we came to an area with a trickling waterfall. Finally, we had made it to the top. At the top of this little waterfall, there's a stream and the final intersection before the cabin. Oh, yep, we're there. Oh, oh thank God, thank God. Woo! Oh, oh. that was 
Brutal. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, so according to this, we did 3.5 miles today. <laughs> Maybe that's accurate, but either way, it doesn't feel like 3.5. If you told me that was like six miles, I'd believe it. <laughs> Remember some trip we took towards the end, we were like, yeah, they didn't bother trying making a trail. <laughs> this feels the same way. Like someone was just like, I'm gonna slap these markers on trees and let the hikers figure it out. <laughs> but now, the trail was gloriously flat and rock-free on the way to the cabin. I think the worst part about the hike up here was the fact that I don't trust a single one of those rocks as far as I can throw them. And I can't far throw them very far. <laughs> Every other rock you step on, it's like... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Dead ahead. Woo! Oh, nice. Is that a latrine to the left there? Looks like it. I see like a front porch or something. It looks nice. While we're here, we're gonna call it Calvin and Hobbes cabin. <laughs> now if we're lucky, there's some chairs at that cabin. Oh man. And I'm gonna partake in a nice sit. <laughs> you guys have not looked at pictures of this then. No, no. No. You have no idea what's in store. Oh, I see a picnic table. That's a good start. <laughs> this oh is like yeah. Our own private estate. <laughs> This is, this is, oh baby. Even if this were just a campground, it would be really nice. <laughs> Go ahead and mosey on inside. Mm, interesting, little bunks. This'll be very interesting indeed. Oh man, what's this right here? Little gall someone stuck there. <laughs> you got cots. Table, bench, yeah. fireplace to ourselves. Almost wish it was gonna be colder so I could have yeah. a nice roasty night. And Almost made the hike worth it. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, I wanna spend some time outside right now. Oh yeah. Oh, most definitely. While we rested, we saw a little lizard crawling around on the cabin. And then it was time for a snack. Right, I'm looking at our energy levels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the last brownie, but it must be done. <laughs> for, uh, we've got to put it out like presentation, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Partake. These are pretty good, man. Mm -hmm. Made of figs or something? Mm. Dude. Dates, right. <laughs> Made out of some kind of fruit. <laughs> you know what's the only problem with these? I need more. <laughs> <laughs> then, on the inside of the cabin, we inspected the quality of the Top bunks. One. This one looks slightly claustrophobic. <laughs> oh! How was it? Pretty good. Really? Yeah. Hmm. It's nice and cool, actually. Yo, oh, yeah, this is way better than I thought it would be. I'm just going all the way. No point in delaying this. <laughs> Hobbs Cabin Logbook. There's nothing but a map. <laughs> and like a really abstract map at that. Huh. They, they got the real one behind it, but... It's like a subway map. <laughs> yeah. Now, it was back outside to enjoy the front porch. Hello. I'm a way to <laughs> While we rested, Andrew started preparing his lion's mane fungus. After boiling the mushroom with miso soup, it was time for a taste test. You're back just in time to try the soup. <laughs> I mean, watch you try the soup. <laughs> so, mushroom miso soup with lion's mane mushroom. And lion's mane, not only is it edible, but there's some research being done about it having medicinal, even cancer curing properties, but we'll see. <laughs> Do 
Just a glowing reaction. <laughs> the texture's good, but it definitely has like kind of a <laughs> wild mushroom flavor to it still. That means old. <laughs> Robbie is repulsed. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you just sucked Cthulhu into your mouth. <laughs> Do you guys want to try any? No. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, it's decent, but like there's definitely a bit of an older taste. I mean, I mean, well... What? Are you sure it's good? Look at that thing. What <laughs> That's what the mushroom looks like. Food is supposed to be appetizing. <laughs> That's just what the actual mushroom looks like. Oh, why am I, why do I keep looking? Sorry. I might actually, I'm wondering if I should cook it longer though. So I'm gonna use this uh, Expedition Research solid fuel stove because our gas stove ran out and I suspect the mushroom might need to boil a little longer. <laughs> I actually, I don't think it was that old because it looked pretty fresh to me, but. <laughs> I mean, what do you guys expect it to look like? It was the color. The color looks weird. It, it looks was like white. I expect it to pinkish. be pinkish. A little more prepared. Go ahead. While Andrew's disgusting mushroom soup reheated, he wandered off to collect some wood for a fire. It was time to cook a real meal for dinner. With the fire going, we first cooked the rest of the rice in our big pot with extra water. Then, it was time to try the soup again. These mushrooms, I've heard, are way better if you like saute or pan fry them, but we didn't really have anything to do that with, like, no oil or butter, but... I mean, taste-wise, it's more or less fine. It has a slight mustiness, but the soup itself is really good, too. It's not bad, but I do feel like this would have been great if we had, like, a pan and butter. After Andrew was done rationalizing why his soup tasted bad, we continued cooking our real dinner. With the rice done heating up, we added in some cheddar broccoli soup mix. Uh, yes, gruel. Okay. okay. Oh man. This really is like risotto. The heartier, the better, right? Tink, tink. <laughs> <laughs> a little hot for Robbie. <laughs> I bet you that tastes real good when it cools down though. <laughs> <laughs> this is somehow very fitting for an old mountain cabin. <laughs> like I joke about it being gruel, but I love foods that are like that. Just <laughs> nice and starchy and sticks to your ribs or whatever. This is the type of food that when you've done a hike like we did today, you don't have to feel bad about anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the rice really adds that extra substance to it too. I think the thing I like about this soup too is that you can kind of savor it. You don't really have to eat big spoonfuls. Yeah, yeah. We worked so hard hiking up that mountain that we want the least amount of work to eat our food. <laughs> Something we can just eat and it goes straight down. Oh, this is also a great meal to go to bed on. Fill up your belly full of this stuff and then go to bed right after. <laughs> The cheddar soup and rice was delicious, but now I wanted to give my mushroom soup a third try. Well, after cooking this a little more on the fire, the musty mushroomy taste has actually been cooked out. It's decent, but compared to that cheddar broccoli, I think I'm gonna go with the cheddar broccoli. <laughs> we were still pretty hungry after the soup, so we cooked a couple more instant meals. Okay, venison pie, courtesy of Ron Miller. Thank you, Ron. Potatoes, carrots, ground venison. I'm eating lots of deer today. Excellent. The sweetness from the carrots is surprising, actually. Could use a little salt. Very good. Very thick and like filling. Mm. Yeah, that's very hearty. Probably reached that point of the day where it could give us almost anything to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the reindeer stew. We also had this reindeer stew sent to us by Ida. Mm. Oh man, that's great. This is way better than I ever expected it would have been. Wow. Man. Mmm. That was good. <clears throat> I'm take another bite. My real termite has not disappointed. <laughs> yeah, I think there's lingon berries in there, which has a really nice little bit of sweetness to it. This one has like perfect flavor. With our bellies full, we headed inside the cabin to prepare our sleeping quarters.
Now, night fell upon us, and we chatted a bit more before bed. How are your guys' bunks? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. You have to be really careful when you get in them because there's not much clearance. Oh, I've okay. hit myself every time I've gotten in and out. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm so tired now that I could be sleeping anywhere. I don't have a conclusion to this thought, but every time I do any type of interesting experience, I'm always amazed that before I know it, it's just a memory. Like before the start of a trip, you're like, oh man, it's gonna be awesome and be out there. And then like just somehow you're at home three days later and you're like, did that actually happen? <laughs> Stuff like this, like the feeling right now and the smell is like so distinct. I feel like it's always important to keep doing weird things like this. Yeah. So that you can not just like have those memories in the past, but be constantly like experiencing that feeling for the first time again. Yeah, that's the thing is when you're a kid, you have so many new experiences all the time. Yeah, yeah. Just because you have no frame of reference for anything. So as you get older, you have to find things to be new and keep your brain fresh. Have we done it? We've done cabins before. It kind of reminds me of the Yellowstone canvas tent. Oh, right. That was nice. That's true. It's sort of kind of like um, Lonesome Lake also. We got a mouse roommate somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we saw a lizard and a mouse. They must be cousins. <laughs> At this point, it's like, you got to give in to the fact that there's going to be other creatures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are everyone's thoughts about the trip so far? It's been great, but it's been tough. It's definitely been one of the tougher trips, I feel yeah. like. The drastic change in weather has been a challenge, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad it drastically changed to 70 degrees and sunny, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. After these kinds of trips, do you guys ever think, man, my legs are going to be so strong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As long as you eat those protein bars. <laughs> <laughs> I really love being out here, but I am also ready to get back, too. Yep. Yesterday I wasn't quite ready, but now I'm ready. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>
the most lively music is performed. It's as Thoreau said, Thaw with his gentle persuasion is more powerful than Thor with his hammer. When things around us feel cold and bleak, we must find the warmth of spring inside of us and always remember to have hope for a better tomorrow. I think it's a vining plant called woodland phlox because there's like some purple flowers growing here and there. Wow, that's crazy. I don't remember it looking like this on the way in. I don't either. <laughs> Thomas so much crap about changing clothes after a trip. Thomas, you were right. <laughs> he was so right. <laughs> Sorry, Thomas. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> hydrate myself properly on that last hike out, which I was worried about. I'm dehydrated from this crappy Pepsi. I was like, oh man, I haven't had a cola in such a long time. Let me get a Pepsi. Terrible. <laughs> I'm thoroughly enjoying my lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> Stealing Brian's butter. <laughs> That's extra butter. I don't like it on my pancakes. Yeah, Texas Eat toast. It. What'd you start with there, Brian? Just a piece of toast and butter. Mm. Let's try one of these bites. Oh, yeah, the bites. The cream here. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's really good. The texture's amazing. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. If you've got country fried steak on the menu, it's like 75%, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> Don't mind me just rebuttering my buttered toast. <laughs> Philly cheesesteak? Yeah. That actually sounds really good. It's kind of like if you took, I mean, obviously it's like if you took a Philly cheesesteak and stuck an egg in it, but it gives it that breakfasty feel now, like it's a breakfast sandwich. Try those jalapeno poppers. <clears throat> those are okra. I do like okra. <laughs> oh no, I, I've missed my pancakes. I guess I'll just have to dip them. <laughs>
Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy our videos, please consider joining our Patreon community at patreon.com slash adventure. You can get access to weekly live streams, in-depth updates, bloopers, commentaries, and more. We also have t-shirts available, which you can find by clicking the link in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching. So you ready for this meeting? Yeah, it's gonna be boring, but we gotta do it. All right. now, let's see, what time is it? Uh, okay, we're still early. I guess I should ring this doorbell. Wait, before you ring that doorbell, you could be in grave danger. Quick, put on this headset from Expedition Research LLC. What, what are you talking about? This... I'm not the John Scott that you know. I'm John from a different universe, the J. Raimundo universe. But I like to call it the Raimundoverse. I have no idea what you're talking about. What are you, what are you talking about? Listen, when you sit down for that meeting with James Rakitsky, follow these instructions. You know, I think when we talk about the finding the synergies between our current activities and our upcoming activities, it's important to remember that we're not really reinventing the wheel here, right? ...and advancements to really kind of solve what we're looking for here. So at the end of the day, it's important for us to remember that finding low-hanging fruit is our ultimate objective and the results. So I encourage us to take a look at our documented key results and our objectives. Kungfu not only is a Kungfu is also a What's going on? Where am I? Salvador Gonzalez. You have accessed an alternate version of yourself in a different universe with what we call verse jumping. You must access your skills here because there is a grave threat to all of our universes, a being named Mukun Kati, a powerful being that can travel from one universe to another and threatens our very existence. If we don't fight back, Mukun will destroy everything and everyone we know, including Brian and Asi Yamagata. Brian and Katya Strom want to give a shout out to Katya's website, hindustanastrology.com. She's a Vedic astrologer, and as we all know, looking at the stars and camping go together. The Morrow family wants to give a shout out to Gabe and Gia, who are doing the 50 miles on the Ice Age Trail. They are about four miles in, although they're probably more at this point. And you know what? We're rooting for you. I want to see what the great Sunjan Huang is made of. Ha! You want me? You got me. Ha! 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 Huh? Elaine R. Anthony, is that my dad? I think it is, Robert. Power levels, 8,000. Huh? Now it's over nine. Ha! Charlie Joe, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! What? 9,000? There's no way that can be right, can it? Don't be so sure. I'll have you know I was trained in the art of GreatLakesWaterCraft.com. Huh? GreatLakesWaterCraft.com? I don't care what you've done. I'm gonna crush you. Uh, ah! That was luck. I'm the second strongest trainer or sea in the universe. It's strange. A year ago, he couldn't beat Jason Bourgeois. And now he's making short work of Jasper Caparata. Next time on Lin and Rocco Z, Leon and Lou join the battle. Hi, I'm Aquia G. Esquire, attorney at law. Did you know that you have rights? The Constitution says you do, and so do I. I believe that every man, woman, and child is innocent until proven guilty. Whether your name is Madeline Holly, Douglas Jackson, or Sue and Tan, I fought for justice for folks just like you. This is William Garnett. They said he couldn't make his own sauerkraut. I got him not one, but two cans of sauerkraut. This is Sanwar One. They said he couldn't wear a hat indoors. I said, yes, he could. This is Mary Sincavage. They said she couldn't wear shoes indoors. I said, yes, she can. This is Dan Vulcans. They said that he couldn't read in the library. Well, I said, can it, bookworms? Call today. And because it's my birthday, get a free bottle of wine with every consultation. Aquia G Esquire, speedy justice for you. Tim Sedlicek wants to give a shout out to all the Patreon people and to Adventure Archives. Thank you, Tim. 
uh, for inspiring people to get out there hiking, and obviously we're super thankful for that too. He also wants to give a shout out to my Nikki for supporting his adventures, and the next adventure he's going to archive is in Ireland. Mmm, leaf. Bruce and Elise Phillips would like to shout out Kent, their third son. Presenting His Excellency Richard Frangia Moy, Mayor of Moss Espa and the surrounding plateaus. The mayor is Major Domo, actually. John Truitt. We were told the mayor was coming to pay tribute. Ah, yes, indeed. With apologies, I understand how one might draw such a conclusion from the correspondence. Very well. Extend my greetings and appreciation for the mayor's tribute. Ah, uh, another understandable misunderstanding. The only, um, tribute I bear is the mayor's heartfelt welcome to you, Gavin Ryan, which I express in his stead. So you bring no tribute? The mayor's heartfelt welcome and regrets that he's been drawn away by other pressing matters, Milady Christina Alvarez. If you had spoken such insolence to the Nakagaki brothers, Brian and Brandon would have fed you to their menagerie. Apologies. Apologies. Tell the mayor I'm here now. He knows. Yes. He knows. Mark wants to give a shout out to his cousin, who unfortunately unexpectedly passed away due to heart troubles. He was an avid backpacker and a fan of uh, our channel. And Mark, our condolences go out to you. Um, we're very heartbroken about this, but we hope that we were able to bring uh, some joy into his life with our videos. And you know what? He's hiking up in the clouds now. We also wanted to give a special shout out from us at Adventure Archives to Aaron Jones and congratulate him for his engagement. We wish you both the best. By the end of this trip, the smells are gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember, the farts are just extra warm. <laughs> oh my god, now I'm smelling it. <laughs>